driving in the car today. That's because I'm on my way to the city to pick up our little cat. He is two years old and he just cost us a lot of money. He got very sick and was throwing up for two days straight. We got really, really worried because it wasn't stopping, he wasn't eating, he wasn't drinking, and it got to a really dangerous point. So no one in town could take him in. <laughs> if you can hear Ellie in the background, it's just her and mama today. Nobody could take him in for days and he was going to die if we didn't do anything. We knew that he wasn't ill. We were worried that he could have swallowed something because we looked it up online and really the only reason that they would be throwing up, throwing up, throwing up is because their food physically can't stay down for some reason. And we were really worried that he had a block and when we got there to the emergency vet hospital the other night, he's been there for two days now, but when we got there, they pretty much said the same thing. They took x-rays. They found a little spot in his stomach that it looked like a piece of material or they said it could have been tissue just bunched up and it could be nothing. It had already been two days and if he hadn't passed whatever it was there and we didn't do anything, then he would just be suffering for another 12 hours for them to monitor him. We figured we would just spend the money and do the surgery. Yes, he needed surgery. And take out whatever was in there. We got the surgery done. They call us. We, we got there at like 8 p.m to the emergency hospital. I had to wait two hours. They call us at 4 a.m. and they tell us that there was nothing. They told us that beforehand that that could happen, but they said it wasn't for nothing. They went in there and they told us that they saw his organs, his pancreas and his liver were really inflamed. They said it could have been pancreatitis or irritable bowel syndrome or a number of things, maybe a food allergy. He might have to change his food. We're still unsure, but <laughs> they got it under control up to this point. He's recovering, he's eating food again and keeping it down. He's going to the bathroom like normal. They're giving him a bunch of nausea medicine and medicine for his stomach to make it less inflamed and coat his GI tract. I'm on the way now, it's been two days, and I'm going to pick him up and bring him home. The aftercare is going to be a lot. We are a little stressed about that. We have to keep him from jumping, and he jumps on everything. He loves to sleep on the couch, so we're gonna have to get a dog crate. If you have problems with your cat and you have to have surgery, any animal, I suggest getting a crate and putting them in there and their food and water and anything they need for the nighttime. And during the daytime, if we're watching him, we might let him out a little bit. He's probably gonna sleep in our bathroom and we'll just block the countertops off. We have a long night ahead of us. We haven't slept all week. I hope that tonight goes smoothly. If your cat has all these issues and you don't know what to do, I suggest asking them if they can run blood work before doing a surgery. They had to take blood work for the surgery and when we gave them the go-ahead, but the blood work kind of came back with these injuries. Hazard reported ahead on I-65 and in a quarter mile. You're still on the fastest route. The blood work came back with all these indicators that something was wrong internally and maybe that we would have we would have known beforehand and kind of been able to make a decision about not doing the surgery ahead of time. I don't know, every cat and every case is different. I will kind of come back here and talk to you guys a little bit later when I get him and we're back in the car and on the way home and update you on how that's going. In the meantime, watch this beautiful little montage of our drive because the clouds are so beautiful today and the sky is so blue.
are now home. If you can see behind me here, we have a sad little kitty in a dress. That is because the cone came off two seconds into the car ride. He was on the floor in his little soft crate and out of the corner of my eye, I just see a little tornado and it was off. The same time that was happening, the baby started crying and crying and crying. So that was really, really stressful. He seems to be doing well. He just got pain medicine about an hour ago. That was not fun. Giving a cat medicine is either you hold them down and gag them or you do the smart thing that the vet didn't tell us to do and you put it in wet cat food. Josue took Ellie and they're going to go get wet cat food right now so that the next time we give him medicine, we don't have to torture him. Probably my favorite part of all this was putting him in Ellie's outfit. That was interesting. Um, you can also see the barricade that we've created in our bedroom to the bathroom and we're keeping him in there. After surgery, it's good to do so they're not running around the house, getting the zoomies, jumping up on the couch, just so that incision can heal and he can eat and we can monitor him a little more closely. Hopefully that won't be for that long. They said 10 to 14 days, but I hope that it's not that long because I don't know how much longer I can do this. Today was really bad like we were in tears it was just the most stress we've ever been under two of us three people were actually needed to hold that cat down for medication and doing the things that we needed to do and there was only two of us and one of us had to be with the baby so it was a lot but we're coming to the end of it so I think We'll see you in the next one.